Warren Buffett says that if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you're gonna work until you die. And if you ask the majority of people how can you get paid while you sleep, they'll tell you to ask your boss for some PTO, pay time off. But that's not what wealthy people are doing. And no, you don't have to be wealthy to start doing this. See, the way that wealthy people and the people that become wealthy look at money is very different than the majority of people. When the majority of people go out and they earn something like $100, they think, what can I buy with this $100? What pair of shoes can I buy? What type of dinner can I go to? What nice thing can I buy myself with this $100 that I earned? What a wealthy person does when they earn this $100 is they ask, how can I turn this $100 into $200? And the way that they do that is by investing their money. And what I wanna focus on in this video is is how you can get started with investing your money so you can grow your money even when you're not working. The first thing you wanna understand is that there's a difference between earning money and growing money. Earning money is how you get the money in the first place. Growing money is how you invest it. And a lot of people get these two concepts confused, but they are completely different. You earn money through your job or your business. You are working to do something to get paid. But what wealthy people do is when they get this money, they wanna then grow this money. It takes money to grow your money, but it doesn't take money to earn money. And when you hear people talking about it takes money to make money, the thing that they get wrong is they assume that if you wanna go out and buy a million dollar apartment complex, you need money, which you do. And so now if you wanna make money from this apartment complex and flip it for millions of dollars, well, yeah, it takes money to do that, but it doesn't take money to go out and earn the money. You gotta focus on the earning, that way you have some money to go out and invest. And a lot of people get this confused because they'll tell you, I want passive income. And I'll ask, well, why do you want passive income? So I have more money to pay my bills, so I have more money to pay my rent, so I have more money to pay my mortgage, so I have some extra money coming in. Well, that's not the way that passive income works. See, what investing is, you gotta understand this in the first place because a lot of people get this confused and then they get very upset when it doesn't work. Investing is when you take some extra money, and then you invest this money. I'll show you how to do that. You take this money and you put it somewhere and you invest it so that way this extra money can grow and make you more money. Investing is not a way for you to just make some more money. Investing is a way for you to grow the money that you have. So if you don't have any money to begin with, you don't have anything to invest. I mean, you can invest in how you can earn more money. I made a video on my YouTube channel talking about how you can start investing with no money. That way you can work to grow how much money you have, but you gotta start with earning some money. Now, assuming that you have a job, assuming you have a business, assuming you have some sort of income, well now, what you gotta do is you gotta stop spending all of your money because the mistake that a lot of people make is they make money to spend and unfortunately, that's what our system produces. We live in a consumerism culture in America which fortunately or unfortunately hurts a lot of people. I mean, obviously it's unfortunate that people get hurt but it's the same system that grows the economy. I mean, when somebody is living in a mobile home park and driving an Uber and spending money on DoorDash every single day, it's very unfortunate when you stay broke, but when you stay broke, it benefits the system. That's why I say it's profitable to keep you poor because if you keep spending all of your money and then some with credit cards and lines of credit, you stimulate the economy because if you make $40,000 a year, but you're spending $60,000 a year with your credit card and other forms of loans, well now you're stimulating the economy with an additional $20,000 that you don't have. That means other people are making 20 grand from you that you don't have. And now you have to spend next year and the year after that and the year after that working to pay it off plus interest. So if you want to start investing your money, the very first part you gotta understand is the, the theoretical part, which is investing is all about taking money, extra money, and putting it to work, that way you can grow your money. How do you get this money? You have to have a stream of income. Now, when you get the stream of income, your job or your business, you can't spend all of your money. That means you gotta stop spending money on the Gucci, you gotta stop spending money on some of the vacations, stop spending money on the fancy cars, if you can't afford it. If you can afford it, fine, buy whatever you want. I don't really don't care. I want you to be able to afford the nice things but if you don't have any investments and you're spending $500 a month on your car or more, your priorities are in the wrong place. So now, when you don't spend all of your money, you got some extra cash. This is the cash that you're gonna go work to invest. And I'm gonna talk about how you invest in just a minute, but I wanna make sure we got this part down. The way then that you invest more is either you work to A, earn more money, or B, spend less money. There's no limit to how much you can earn, but there's a limit to how much you can cut back on your expenses. And so as you start investing, you're gonna ask the question, how can I get to my wealth number sooner? How can I have millions of dollars sooner? Well, if you invest more money, you can grow that money faster because remember, you're growing the money when you're investing, but you need some money to start with. The bigger the pile that you start with, the faster you can grow it. Now, of course, investing has risks. You're never guaranteed to make money when you invest. In fact, you will lose money at some point, which is why you gotta always do your own due diligence and never blindly trust a random guy on YouTube but investing is all about growing the extra money. That's what investing is. So now, 
how does investing actually work? The whole idea of investing now is you're going to take this extra money and you're going to put it into this thing. This thing is an asset. I'll explain what that means. But it's something that you're buying for the sole purpose of making money. When you go out and you buy a pair of shoes, well, the $100 pair of shoes is going to be worthless in a few years. Because if you had to sell that shoes, you're not going to get much back after you pay $100 for it. When you buy a car, that's also a liability. Because when you buy a $20,000 car, in a few years, that car is only going to be worth $10,000. A few years after that, that car is only going to be worth $500. A few years after that, it's going to be worth nothing. Not to mention all the maintenance and oil changes and gas that you had to put in to drive the car, plus the insurance as well. So your car is a liability. Your clothes are a liability. When you buy a vacation to Cancun, it's a liability because you can spend $10,000 on the vacation, but it doesn't put some money in your pocket. Now you might say, well, just breathe. It gives me relaxation and all these other things. Well, that's fine. I'm not arguing against that. It's not putting any money in your pocket. The asset on your vacation to Cancun is Delta because they flew you there. It's the Hilton that you stayed at. See, those are the assets. If you owned a Delta, if you own Hilton now, those are assets. But when you're the one that's paying Delta and when you're paying Hilton, well, it's a liability for you. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't have any liabilities, but you have to understand the difference between an asset and a liability and make sure that you own the assets to fund the liabilities because unfortunately most people in America today have only liabilities. They don't even know what an asset is. And this is why the majority of people stay broke. It's the way the system is designed because our system profits when you're financially uneducated. It profits even more when you're in debt and uneducated. But this is why it's important for you to be financially educated. That way you can afford all the nice things without having to worry about the price. So now, you want to own these assets. What are these assets? Well, if we take a look at the last 100 years in the United States, there are three assets that have built more wealth than anything else. Businesses, stocks, and real estate. You don't have to get super complicated, but these are the three assets that have built more wealth than anything else. Starting a business is hard. It is also the most risky. It is also the most time consuming, but it can also give you some of the biggest gains. Investing money in the stock market costs the least amount of money to start because you can start with as little as $10. It's the most accessible because you just got to download an app on your phone, enter in some information, and you can start investing in stocks, which are companies. Investing in real estate gives you a tangible asset. When you buy a rental property, a home, or an apartment complex, you own the bricks, you own the land, you own the windows, you own things, something that you can see, feel, and touch. You also get some of the biggest and best tax breaks. As an attorney, like your attorney, what I can tell you is that our tax code gives real estate investors some of the biggest tax breaks that our tax code has to offer. Not to mention, you can also generate cash flow. That's the main purpose that people invest in real estate is because you can buy a property, rent it out, the tenants pay all of your expenses and the mortgage if you have one and put some money in your pocket. But it also costs a lot more money to start because if you want to go out and buy a home, well, you can't do that with $25. You can invest in the stock market with $25, but you can't go out and buy a property for $25. The way I'll break up this video on how do you invest your money is I'll talk about stocks first and then I'll talk about real estate. I'm not gonna go into business in this video because building a business is very different than investing your money in stocks and real estate. If you wanna see more content on building a business, let me know down in the comments, but I'm gonna start by talking about investing your money in stocks because when you invest in a stock, you have to start understanding the thought process behind it first because a lot of people, what they do is they go out and they open up a Robinhood account and then they buy whatever's hot on Robinhood. They see a stock is blowing up on Robinhood and then they go and buy and then they wonder why they lose money on it because they buy and then it starts going down and then they sell because it gets scared and then they don't understand why investing only works for the rich and how it's rigged and how Wall Street is, is controlling the game. But you're doing it completely wrong because you got to start by understanding what you're doing when you're investing. Because first you have to understand the difference between trading and investing. Trading is when you go out and you try to find a stock that you can flip in three months, six months, or nine months, that you're finding this company that you think is going to go up in the next few months and then sell it for a quick profit. That is like gambling. I don't trade. I don't know how to trade. And well, you can make a lot of money very quickly with trading, but you can lose that money just as fast. I only talk about investing. Investing is now, instead of trying to find this, this quick flip, what you're looking for is a company. You're investing in a business. Because when you go out and you buy one share of, say, McDonald's, you become one of the owners of the McDonald's company. The McDonald's company, along with every other company that trades on the stock market, is broken up into shares. So if this circle depicts 
the ownership of McDonald's is broken up into many small slices called shares. At the time of recording this video, McDonald's has something around 720 million shares out there. So if you go out and you buy one share of the McDonald's stock, you become one of the owners of the McDonald's company. Now you own one 720 millionth of McDonald's. What does that entitle you to? that entitles you to some of the profits of the McDonald's company, of the McDonald's corporation. So what does that mean? As McDonald's starts to make more money, the stock price might start to go up. Why? Because other investors might say, oh, this is a valuable company. Their profits are growing. Their revenues are rising. They're expanding in more locations. So I want to own this stock. And then the stock price starts to go up. That's one way that you can make money. It's called appreciation. Now, you don't actually make any money until you sell. So let's just assume that you bought a stock for $200 a share. It goes up to $400. You don't actually make any money unless you actually sell. But when you sell, you also have to pay taxes. But you got to understand that when a stock goes up, you don't make money. And when a stock goes down, you don't make money. You only make money when you sell and you only lose money when you sell if the stock is down. But the second way that you can make money is some companies like McDonald's, pay out what's called a dividend. And a dividend is when McDonald's makes a lot of profit, which they do, and then they can take this cash and do one of three things. They can save this cash for an emergency. They can take this cash and open new stores, open new franchises, invest in new technology, hire more employees, which they also do, or they can take this cash and give it away to the shareholders. Remember, they have 720 million shares out there. If you own one of those shares, you are a shareholder of the McDonald's corporation. And so now when McDonald's makes billions of dollars in profits and they don't know what to do with it, they can just give it away to the shareholders. Now, how do they give it away? In the form of a cash payment called a dividend. Dividends are generally paid out once every three months, meaning once every quarter. And this is cash they just deposit into your bank account for doing nothing except owning the company. And this is where now you can get some of that profit for just owning the company. So how do you get paid as an investor? You get paid now because you own some of the ownership in the company and you get your share of the profits through things like dividends. Now we got to be practical. If you invest $100 into the stock market and a company is paying you a 3% dividend, that means for every $100 you invest, you're making $3 a year in cash flow. Not anything significant, but the goal isn't to invest $100 one time and call it quits. The goal is to invest money every week, every two weeks, every month, month after month, year after year, decade after decade. And that's how you start to accumulate more and more wealth and more and more cash flow through any of your investments. But you have to know what it is that you're going to invest in. You have to know what is a good investment and what's the right strategy for you. And this is where things get a little bit more difficult because most people are just looking for the next hot NVIDIA, the next hot Amazon, the next hot Tesla, right? The hot stocks, the buzzy stocks. But if you're hearing about it on the news, then you've already missed the big bull run, the big rush. And if you really want to be able to find the opportunities, this is where you have to get a little bit deeper and granular in understanding your own financial education. And this is where I want to break it up into a few different questions that I want you to understand. And number one is understanding what is your goal as an investor? Meaning, do you want to be an active investor or a passive investor? And an active investor is not a trader. An active investor is someone who's going to invest in individual companies like the McDonald's company or the Amazon company because now you're looking for an individual company that you believe is going to be worth more money in the future, that you believe is innovating, that you believe that the profits are going to grow. Because if you believe that a company is going to make less money next year, you don't want to invest in that. You want to invest in a company that's going to make more money in the future. That way it makes you more money. But the alternative to that is being a passive investor. And a passive investor is somebody who's not investing in individual companies. They're investing in a fund and I'll wipe this off to show you what I mean. Now, as a disclaimer, everything that I talk about is just for example purposes. I'm not telling you what to invest in. So we were just talking about investing in something like the McDonald's stock, which has a ticker symbol of MCD. So if you wanted to buy McDonald's, you can go onto your stock brokerage account and buy one share of MCD. But the alternative is to invest in a fund. And this fund might own shares of something like McDonald's. It might own shares of Amazon. It might own shares of Apple and a hundred other companies. So now what you do is you're buying this fund as opposed to one company. Now, the advantage here is if you don't know how to read the McDonald's financial statements, if you don't know how to read the income statement, the balance sheet, the cash flow statement, if you don't want to listen to the earnings statement, if you don't want to keep up with the company and study the company, 
we might not want to invest in the individual company. In fact, what I say is 98% of Americans should not be investing in individual companies because most people have no idea what the heck they're investing in. They don't want to do the research and they don't know how, which is okay, you don't have to. But the alternative is you can just invest in a fund. Now there's a few different types of funds. You have index funds, mutual funds, ETFs, all three of these work similarly with some nuanced differences. But they all work the same in the sense that they are all different types of funds or baskets of companies that you invest in. And there are funds for anything and everything that you can imagine. I mean, just do a quick Google search. There are funds that give exposure to healthcare, technology, real estate, to India companies, Chinese companies, international companies. So there are a lot of different funds out there. I'll give you a few to start with, to start your research with. Again, I'm not telling you what to invest in, just giving you a few examples. So for example, there is an ETF, a fund called VTI. If you go and invest in this one ETF, you're getting exposure to the total stock market. So instead of investing in every stock out there, you can invest in this fund and get some exposure to the United States stock market. There's another fund called SPY. This gives you exposure to the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is a group of the 500 largest companies on the stock market. So now, instead of going out and investing of all 500 companies, you can just invest in a fund like SPY. There's a fund called Q, 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 which gives you exposure to the NASDAQ. You might've heard of this index or group of companies called the NASDAQ. Well, if you wanna invest in that, you can just invest in a fund called the QQQ. So there's a lot of different funds out there. The key is just understanding what it is that you want to invest in. And this is where it's important for you to keep up with what's happening in the financial news, but even more than that, the financial trends, because that helps you understand where is money going, where are consumer habits going, and where are behaviors going, because you wanna be investing in money where the money is going. You wanna be investing in an industry that's growing in the next two years, 10 years, 20 years, not that's gonna be bankrupt in the next 10 years. And this is where it's important for you to understand not just the financial news, but also the financial trends. And this is where my company, Briefs Media, works to keep you up to date with this. We have a free newsletter called Market Briefs that breaks down what's happening in the financial news. It's completely free. If you haven't joined Market Briefs yet, I got the link for you down in the description below. It's a super fun to read newsletter. You can read it in less than five minutes every morning, and I promise you're gonna love it. And if you don't, well, you can unsubscribe at any time because it's free. So, passive investing is a set it and forget it system where I like to do it where every time you get paid, some of your money is automatically invested. For me, I do both. I have an active investing and a passive investing system. My passive investing system happens every Wednesday. And every time I say that, I get so many comments of people saying, well, just breathe, why did you pick Wednesday? As if it was this like secret sauce system of something that happens on Wednesday. It really wasn't. It was just in the middle of the week, hump day. So I picked Wednesday. And uh, every Wednesday, money is pulled out of my check-ins account and it's invested into my portfolio of funds and that happens every Wednesday. It doesn't matter if the market's up, if the market's down, if it's raining outside, if it's sunny outside, if it's hailing or thunderstorming, I do it no matter what. And I wanna give you this little piece of caution here because markets go up and markets go down. And a lot of times people invest their money thinking that I'm gonna make a lot of money in six months and you're constantly watching your portfolio, seeing what your portfolio is doing today and tomorrow, the day after that, and it's gonna give you all this anxiety. But what you gotta remember is markets go up, markets go down. And if you're investing for the long term, and if you have a good asset, well, you don't need to monitor it day by day. If you go and buy a home tomorrow, you're not gonna check Zillow in the afternoon and see what did the home price go to, and then next week to see what happened with the home price. I mean, that would be kind of crazy because you know home prices don't move like that. Stock prices move all the time because, well, you can buy and sell a stock with the push of a button. And so, if you're gonna be investing in stocks, understand markets go up and down. It's a fact. We've seen a recession in our economy every decade for the last century, and we're gonna to continue to see recessions. We're gonna to continue to see market crashes. Now, market crashes are scary because everybody panics, people freak out, but they also create opportunity. And they create opportunity only for those that are financially educated, prepared, and understand the trends. And what I mean by that is when market crashes happen, and we've seen, well, uh, quite a few in the last couple of decades. We saw one in 2020, 2008, 2000, and every time we see a market crash, the same thing happens. People panic and they sell, and the financially educated come in and they buy good investments for pennies on the dollar. And so, this is where you have to learn to stay calm, cut through the emotions, find the opportunity, and use them as an opportunity to invest. And this is where just understanding, look, markets go up and down. You can't time the market. You wanna be able to win when the markets are up and down. That's where the wealth is built. Because, well, if I'm being completely honest with you, I made a lot of money when the 2020 crash happened. 
I made a lot of money after the 2008 crash happened because they created opportunities. But again, that requires you to be prepared. That means you have to be financially prepared. You have to have cash to be able to protect you, but also be able to capitalize on opportunities. I mean, if you see a great investment opportunity tomorrow, you see an amazing stock, an amazing business, amazing investment, but you have no money to buy it, it doesn't do you any good. That's where you want to start preparing. Then you need the financial education, right? You need to know what do you invest in? How do you analyze an investment? How do you actually invest your money? That's what financial education is all about. And then you need to understand the trends, which is what industry do you want to be invested in? Like you can know what I want to invest in, but if you don't know which industries, like I want to invest in a fund, but I don't know what type of fund to invest in, I don't know what industry to invest in, well, that doesn't give you the best returns because you want to be investing your money into an industry that is growing and that will continue to grow in the future. But just understand the markets don't always go up and then you can use the downturns as an opportunity to invest even more. Which now brings me to the second question you want to ask here, which is how you want to get paid. And there's two ways you can get paid. Remember, we just talked about this a couple minutes ago. You can get paid with appreciation or you can get paid with cash flow. Appreciation is when the markets go up and your stocks or investments go up. Cash flow is when you get paid just for owning the investments. You got to know what's right for you. For me, I personally am a cash flow investor. I love the idea of owning investments and getting paid without having to sell because now I can just work to stack the cash flow. Every week, I'm working to buy more funds that are paying me with more dividends and the more cash flow. That means every quarter, every three months, I get a bigger check. And then I use that check that I get to buy more of these cash flow producing funds. That way I can get even bigger checks. That's my goal. But the reason why this is so difficult is because practically speaking, it's gonna take a long time before you get any significant amounts of dividends. I mean, if you're fund is paying you 3% a year in dividends, you invest a million dollars, you're only making $30,000 a year. Now I get it, $30,000 extra a year is a lot, but you need a million dollars to do that, which is why a lot of people get turned away from this idea. But the way that you build wealth is not by investing a million dollars today because most people don't have a million dollars to invest today. The way that you really build wealth is by investing a little bit of money today, a little bit of money next week, a little bit of money the week after that, a little bit of money the week after that, and after that, and after that, and after that, you do that month after month, year after year, decade after decade. And now what you can do is after 10 years of doing this, you can build a pretty significant stream of income if you stay consistent. But most people don't have the patience to wait 10 years to really see any big returns because the reality is the first three years, they're pretty much negligible. I mean, it's, it's pretty much nothing that you're going to get. But if you stay consistent, as you get a raise, as you make more money, you invest more money. As you get a bigger raise, you invest more money. And as you get paid from your dividends, you keep reinvesting them. By year four, you start to make a little bit. By year seven, you make a little bit more. By year 10, now you start to make something significant. But if you're not willing to go through that, well, that's where a lot of people and a lot of financial planners will push people to the growth investments, which again is fine. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but you just gotta know what your goal is and make sure you're making investments that are right for you, which then bring you to the question of what type of assets do you want to invest in? Like we just talked about stocks, obviously you can do real estate. Then you gotta know which actual asset do you want to buy? What types of funds? What type of index ones? What types of ETFs? What types of mutual funds? Or what types of individual companies? Which ultimately goes down to the financial education you want to do. Which brings me to the second topic that I want to discuss today, which is none other than real estate. Now you're going to notice that I tend to be very honest and transparent. And the reason why is because there's a lot of crap on the internet. And my goal of making these videos is not to make friends, is to help you be a little bit more financially educated. Because what a lot of people do is they say, okay, you want to buy this property. Let's assume that it's on sale for $150,000. What most people say is, well, number one, I don't have $150,000. And so this is where people say, okay, you can go buy it with debt. You need to put down $30,000 to go and buy this property. And then a lot of people will say, I don't have $30,000. And then they will tell you, don't worry, there are other forms of creative financing where you can use 100% debt. That way you can buy these properties with 0% down or only $1,000 or $2,000. And then you start getting into these very risky and highly leveraged games where you have no skin in the game, you have no idea what you're doing, you have no experience, and now you start going on buying these properties. And I'm gonna be completely honest with you. Those have been the best deals ever, not for you, for me, some of the best deals that I have purchased were from people that have purchased properties with way too much debt, with way little education to know what they're doing. And then the banks force them to sell their properties at a huge discount to somebody who has more cash like me. And some of the best deals that I purchased were from people that have been foreclosed on by multiple banks following these extremely highly leveraged deals. So. If you want to invest in real estate, 
and you want to own and operate the property yourself, you got to have some cash, period. If you're going to do it with 0% debt, understand it is so risky. Have some people done it successfully? Yes, I'm sure they have, but it is so much more risky. You got to have some skin in the game if you want to be able to do this properly, which means if you want to buy this property, you better have at least 30% to use as the down payment and some extra cash to protect you because as soon as you buy this property, there will probably be some sort of repairs or you can buy the property cash as well, depending on what the property is. And I know that can be very excessive. Just understand that if you don't have any skin in the game, you're taking on all the risk. But let me talk about how real estate investing works now that I kind of put aside this disclaimer. The way real estate investing works is you buy this property, it could be a home, it could be an apartment complex, it could be a commercial building, it could be an office building, it could be a retail building, it could be any type of property. But the reason why you're buying it is now for you to live in yourself and to use yourself. You're buying it so somebody else can live there or use your property and pay you rent. So I go out and buy this property for $150,000 and then I have this nice couple, this guy right here who has a nice mustache in Punjabi, my native language, we call it a much or and or his wife, I should say, who has a braid in my native language, Punjabi, we call this a gut. So this nice couple live in my property in exchange for them living in my property, they pay me, I don't know, $1,600 a month for living in my property. Now, the goal here is to take this rent and use this to cover all of my expenses, property taxes, insurance, maintenance, management, and have a vacancy factor. I know a lot of people don't talk about this, but you have to factor in vacancy as well because the reality is when these people move out, there's gonna be some time before the next tenant moves in. So you wanna have the vacancy factor. So you wanna use the rent to cover all your expenses and your mortgage if you have one, and then put some money in your pocket. And the types of returns you get is gonna depend on where you're buying and what you're buying and what types of properties and conditions you're buying as well. For me, my goal is a 7% cash on cash return, which means if I'm buying this $150,000 property, all cash, I put 150 grand out of my bank account to buy this property, I want a 7% return, which would be $10,500 in profit every year for owning this property. That's after paying all my expenses, after paying for the property taxes, the insurance, the maintenance, the management fees, and the vacancy, to have $10,500 in my bank account in profit at the end of the year. Now, I know what you're thinking. There's a couple things that you're probably thinking. Number one, just please, where in the world am I gonna find a property for 150 grand that I can rent out for $1,600 a month? Well, there are parts of the country in the United States that allow for this. You might not be able to find it in Los Angeles. You might not be able to find it in Manhattan. You might not be able to find it in Austin. You might not be able to find it in Miami, but guess what? You can find it in the Midwest. I'm in Detroit. Our office is in downtown Detroit. Michigan is a great state, not just for rental properties, it's a beautiful state, by the way, very underrated. I highly recommend you come check it out, but there are also some great real estate investment properties where you can do these types of deals. I mean, they're not all day long, but you'll find these types of deals and you can get these types of returns. So now, the question is, what is the benefit of real estate? Well, like we talked about before, you own something that you can see, feel, and touch. You get some tax benefits because if you make $10,000 worth of profit, you also get to tell the IRS, hey, my property's one year older, so I don't want to pay taxes on all $10,000. You get a depreciation deduction. You get to write off a piece of the property value against your income so you don't have to pay taxes on all the income that you generate, and you get the steady cash flow. But it takes more work to get started. You got to be able to manage a team because I can tell you in the beginning, it is not passive. It took me a few years to get the hang of it. A lot of stress, a lot of mistakes, expensive mistakes, and a lot of screwing up, which if you're not willing to go through that, don't invest in real estate. It is a lot of work. Now, my goal isn't to manage the properties myself. I don't know who my tenants are. My tenants don't know who I am. I have a property management company who handles all the day-to-day -day stuff who lease out the properties, who screen the tenants, who make sure that the tenants pay, who take care of the maintenance, who make sure the property bills are paid, who make sure the taxes are paid, who build my financial reports for me. I don't have to do the day-to-day -day stuff. For me now, and again, it took me a long time to get here. For me now, it's I'm reviewing the monthly reports, I'm reviewing the quarterly reports, and I'm making sure that the management company is doing their job. So it's overseeing, still requires some more work, but that's my role now, as opposed to me handling the day-to-day -day stuff. I don't recommend you go out and become a manager of the property and you start doing all the leasing and the, the repairs and 
all the day-to-day -day stuff with management because you want to be an investor, not a manager. You can hire a manager. You want to spend your time, focus, and energy being an investor and acquiring more deals. That's how you really build wealth. But again, investing, if we go back to the beginning, let's tie it all together now. Investing is how you grow your money. But you have to have money to grow in the first place. And this is where you got to work to earn some money, not spend all of it, take this money and invest it. And it's so hard because this means you made $10,000, but you don't go out and buy a Rolex. You take the 10 grand and instead of going on a vacation or buying a nice watch, you buy some assets, right? Stocks and real estate, which you can't show off the way you can a Gucci belt, a vacation or a Rolex. But if you keep doing that for a little while, I call it a decade of sacrifice. And I know it's hard, but a decade of sacrifice is you work to spend less and earn more for 10 years. That way you work to accumulate these assets because after 10 years, you're going to have a whole different financial life for you, your wife, your husband, and your kids. But if you stick with it, you're going to live a whole new financial life. But if you can do that, you continue to just stack assets. Well, now these investments can start funding those fun and cool things that you wanted. And you don't have to really stress about the price because, well, there's more money that just keeps coming and you don't have to work to earn this money. If you own a rental property, guess what? You can get paid on the first of every month without having to go to work. Your property management company just deposits a check into your bank account. Maybe it comes in on the 15th of the month because it takes some time to do the processing, but guess what? Every month, cash just keeps getting deposited into your account with your dividends. Every three months, you get another check, you get a notification. $428 was just deposited into your account. And then you can continue working to grow that and grow that. But it takes that discipline of making money, not spending it on something that you can show off, buying the assets, Letting the assets make you some money, taking the money you make, buying some more assets. You do this for a decade, and now all of a sudden you have an amazing portfolio of assets that can help fund your lifestyle. Now, before you go, if you got some value out of this video, I would love it if you could hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to this channel, and share this video with somebody who you think will also benefit from it. You can use OPM, other people's money. Use somebody else's dollars to then invest. That way now you can pay them back a little bit of interest and then you get to keep the profits. But when it doesn't work, that means now not only did you lose your money that you put into your investment, but now you still owe these people back their money plus interest. 